The government says television networks should not be allowed to censor what they broadcast to Canadians. They want to turn us into co-conspirators to their propaganda machine. Giving them unfettered access to a mountain of media material for free. It's an exception for political parties that for no one else. It's without permission or compensation. But only politicians. Because other people don't have the right to violate copyright laws. This is really uh, like a truth squad. It's flirting with fascism. Maybe they should make the argument to turn the public broadcaster into a state broadcaster is what well, I'm that thinking. Is, it's, that, it's quite something. That's really where it seems it's going. <laughs> oh, I just keep coming to that flirting with fascism line by Don Martin. I tell you, that media party is outraged. The political parties might want to use news footage and ads, which has been done since the dawn of television. Well, a confidential agreement struck between CBC, CTV, Global, and City News will ban any ads they don't like, all because the Tories ran an ad that the CBC thought was mean to Justin and used some of their footage. So journalists who quote others for a living are deciding that they don't want to be quoted themselves. Copyright lawyer Howard Knopf joins us with more from Ottawa. Howard, welcome back to the show. I learned so much from our brief interview the other day about the statute of Anne and about the 1988 court case where the shoe was on the foot, on the other foot, where the liberals went to court. What can you give us more thoughts or more updates? I mean, going to your blog, excesscopyright.blogspot.ca. How has this debate evolved over the last week? Well, it's been really interesting to watch because, uh, uh, unlike most stories, uh, perhaps uniquely in this case, the news media themselves have probably become the main focus of the story. The story has morphed from being about a possible rumored change to the copyright law, really to a story about, uh, uh, about the, the, quote, consortium uh, formed at the instigation of the CBC, <clears throat> and which uh, your network, to its great credit, uh, has unearthed 137 pages of, of interesting documents. So that's really where the story is headed now. I mean. Uh, uh, you know, it's about free speech. Uh, I think it was Voltaire who said, uh, said that, uh, I may not like what you say, but I'll fight to the death for your right to say it. And that's kind of what's going on here now. The government, to its credit, uh, has identified a problem with the, with the networks, and, uh, and uh, you guys at, at Sun, to your credit, have found all these documents and uh, made them available. They're on my blog and elsewhere now. And... Um, uh, it may be that we don't need an amendment to the Copyright Act because the Copyright Act, uh, as you pointed out, and uh, I, I thank you for your compliment, but you did some good research on your own and found the Statute of Anne and all of that stuff, and you had a nice show the other day about it, uh, almost half an hour. The copyright law al already allows the use of, of, of these uh, clips for political advertising. I mean, if they're very short and not substantial, you don't even have to think about the Copyright Act because that's the way the Act works. It doesn't engage for non-substantial copying. And if the copying is substantial, there are any one of several bases in which it may be fair dealing. Uh, for example, for education or research or, or news reporting or criticism or review or satire or parody. And this government, to its credit, deserves full credit for adding the words education, satire, and parody. So it may be that the, the amendment is not needed now. And uh, in fact, the Prime Minister, there's a clip on, out there which I'm going to put up on my blog, the Prime Minister himself said the law already allows this kind for this kind of thing, and he doesn't want to see anything happen that could possibly censor or block uh, the right of Canadians to, to hear this kind of speech. So whether or not you like negative ads, they can be informative, and, uh, and they should be a basic pillar of, uh, of society. So I don't think it was the government. I mean, some have suggested that the government had some kind of ulterior motive here to, to allow itself more freedom of speech and somehow take it away from others. I don't think that was their agenda at all, but uh, if, if, if there's no need for an amendment, we don't have to worry about it because then there won't be any sort of, there won't be any unintended consequences from any legislation. Mm -hmm. And I'm presuming that there was no uh, uh, intended consequence to, to enhance speech for political parties and detract from it for others. So I think it's turning into a competition law issue. I think I was the first to mention that mentioned the Competition Act uh, last week, but others have followed up very, very nicely, in particular uh, Professor Ariel Katz at University of Toronto, who's Canada's leading uh, scholar uh, when it comes to the intersection of intellectual property and competition law. He has a very important uh, uh, lengthy blog about this uh, yesterday, and Michael Geist has followed up, of course. Uh, so it 
could well be that the Commissioner of Competition will find something quite interesting to look here uh, about the, the quote consortium with the purpose, uh, the avowed purpose of li to limit this kind of activity. Uh, he's of course uh, an independent uh, actor politically. He's, he, he's not political, he's an independent person uh, under the statute and in, in practice and he has an enormous amount of resources and investigative tools available to him. Uh, and, um, and, uh, and by the way, I mean, uh, you as a lawyer would know this, but your listeners may not. Uh, any six residents of Canada uh, can, uh, or the Minister of Industry for that matter, uh, if for any reason uh, the, the, the Commissioner doesn't uh, get the ball rolling right away, they can, uh, they can take steps to, to encourage, <laughs> to, 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 to get him to do that under to the cause act. A, To cause an investigation under it, the Competition Act. You exactly. are giving me ideas, sir. Listen, <laughs> Howard, it's great to have you on the show, and I appreciate uh, your comments there. I'm going to check out your website. I'm going to mention it one more time, excesscopyright.blogspot.ca. I learned so much from your website. It's a pleasure to have you on in person, and perhaps we can keep in touch in the days and weeks ahead as this story continues to unfold. The pleasure's mine, Thanks, Howard. More